We're in the middle of a series titled um, Praise Him. Praise Him. We, we are looking at the different um, hymns, the titles of the hymns, and we are connecting it with Scripture and, 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 and understanding and learning what the Scriptures say about this hymn. Now, let me just help you. Your hymnology should always have theology. In fact, you shouldn't even sing a hymn if it doesn't have theology about him. So it's our hymnology coupled with theology. In fact, historically, the church uh, for, for centuries, for ages, and especially the black church, we, we, have, we have sung hymns to get us through some of the most tumultuous times we've ever had, but it was mixing our hymnology with our theology to overcome whatever adversity we experience in life. So, so far we've looked at great is thy faithfulness. We, we've seen how it is as believers. We go through times of turmoil, times of, times of, 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 of situations, listen, sometimes that we caused. It got real quiet. Where, where are my survivors at one more time? Y'all going to have to help me preach today. Just, all right, make me survive this message, amen. So it, it is, it is, y'all crazy. <laughs> so it is God, great is, thy, great is thy faithfulness. We learned that when we, when we make mistakes sometimes, right, when we cause them, we've learned God's love is everlasting. Great is thy faithfulness. We also learned last Sunday, oh, to be kept, that, that, that God is able to, to keep us from falling. Today, we're not going to look at great is thy faithfulness. We're not going to look at oh, to be kept. We're going to look at have thine own way, Lord. It is have thine own way. Lord, have your way in my life. And, and as we have, we have gone through Scripture together, we've learned a few things about the hand of God. So when we looked at great is thy faithfulness, we saw that God can remove his hand. That when the people were disobedient, when the people rebelled against God, what did he do? He removed his hand. Why? They didn't want his presence. So God removed his hand and said, all right, go ahead and do you. See how that works out. He removed his hand. We learned last week that God was able to guide with his hand. Oh, to him who was able to keep us from falling or stumbling. We learned God is able to guide us with his hand. And in this passage of Scripture, we're going to learn something else about the hand of God. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. Got your Bibles, Jeremiah 18, verse 1. If you don't have it, say, hold up. It is coming to a screen near you. Verse 1 says this. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred, watch this, in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as he seemed best for him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord, like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand. Yes, thank you, Lord. Lord, as your word goes forth this morning, we ask God that it does not go in one ear and out the other, but deep into our hearts to transform us into the men and women of God you've called us to be. Speak Holy Spirit. Words of life that we may be transformed into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. 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 Throughout time, we see, we see revelations of God's hand. So today I want to look at the, the power of God's hand. If you, you, you look through Scripture from Old Testament to New Testament... It, all, it gives analogies or metaphors or symbols of God's hand. Often when we see God's hand moving, we see him, his hand moving in the lives of his people. When I was studying and I was looking at this particular message we're going we're to look at today, 
Um, it, I, I noticed a few things about what God has done with his hand at least the last two weeks. We'll learn one more today. One, God is able to remove his hand. He can move his hand from his people and his people experience a life for a moment without his hand. With his hand comes favor. With his hand comes protection. With his hands come blessings. With his hands come security. With his, with his hand comes sustainability. But God, when you don't want him, can remove his hand. We learn God can also use his hand to guide us so we don't stumble and fall. Today, we're learning that God can use his hand to shape us, mold us, and transform us. God can use his hand. And he says, just as the potter has the clay, so do I have you. So God is able to put the believer in his hand and begin to mold and shape. But when I was, as I was studying, I said to myself, what is up with God's hand? From Old Testament to New Testament, it, it reveals his omnipotence, the fact that he's all-powerful. But it also reveals his omniscience, the fact that he knows because he, he reveals things through Scripture, not just because he's powerful, but because he knows you. And he's able to interact and intervene on the behalf of his people with the symbol of his hand. And so the first thing I learned studying Scripture was, and this is just a limited, it's not all of them because we're going to be here until Jesus comes back if I go through all of them, that God's hand holds us up. God's hand is able to hold us up. Who's going through something today? Y'all raise your hands quick. Lord have mercy. <laughs> think about this. I want, you to, I, want, I want you to think about what you're going through. Right now, this past week, this past month, this season. Because I, my, my, my prayer has been, Lord, if they can see the power of your hand in the life of a believer, they can trust you that whatever they're facing right now, you will pull them through this. So if you're not going through this, go ahead and put this in your back pocket because you're going to need it soon. All right? But, but, but listen to me. If you're going through something and you, you know, like, this is a rough season, it's either mentally, physically, or just your, your home or your job, your career, you're, you're just, you, I'm, you're going through it. I want you to hear this. God is able to hold you up, making it personal. He's able to hold you up with his hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. It's about to bless your life. If you have your Bible, go to Isaiah 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. This entire chapter is surrounded around the theme of God, the helper. The one who helps. Anybody need help? Help! The one who helps. Verse 10 says this. So do not fear, for I am, here it is, with you. Do not be dismayed. Watch this. Who said that? I am your God. Rewind the tape. Do not be afraid. Why? I am with you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I know you're, you're anxious. I know you, you're, you're experiencing moments and flashes of fear. God said, don't be afraid. Why? I'm with you. I know you feel like you're the only one going through it. I know you feel stuck. I, I, I know you feel isolated. God says, so don't, this is the one who helped, this whole chapter, the one who's coming to help you says, I'm with you. You are not by yourself. One of the, one of the greatest dangers of the enemy is to make you feel, one, you're by yourself. Two, you're the only one on earth going through it. God says, listen to me, you're my people, I'm with you. Then he says, don't, don't be dismayed. Don't be in distress. Don't fall apart. Why? Do you not? I am your God. I'm not your mama. I'm not your daddy. I'm not your cousin. I'm not your crazy uncle. I am your God, and you're going through it, and I'm with you. 
Watch this. Because I'm with you, because I'm your God, this is what I'm going to do for you. What you going to do? I will strengthen you and help you. Watch this. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Are you with me? So the, the people of God are going through it. They, they're, they're stuck. They, they are in distress. They are, they're falling apart. They don't know what to do. God comes in. Gives them a word and says, don't, don't, don't waver. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Why? I'm with you. I'm your God. And l- let me tell you something. The, c- the scenario that's already in your mind, watch this. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to help you. Watch this. And I'm going to uphold you. Which means we will find ourselves in scenarios where we can't help ourselves. Where where you can't muster up enough strength to get over it. Where where you can't even have the ability to sustain yourself. And God says, I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to step into the scene, to step into the situation, step into the turmoil, step into the danger, step into the heartache, step into the sadness, step into the brokenness, and I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to help you. And guess what I'm going to do? When your legs get weak, I'm going to hold you up with my right hand. He, this, this passage of Scripture is not for somebody who has it together. It, it, it's for the person who knows, Lord, if you don't show up, if, if you don't come through, no, now, not, not, Lord, I'm now smoking over. I need you, Lord, I need you now. And, and God says, I'm going to give you strength. Watch this. He says, and I'm going to help you. Help means I'm going to come in and maintain it. Y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to come in and I'm going to maintain it. And I'm going to give you strength. Now, the word, this word for strength is both, both physical and mental. Do you know you can be going through some stuff in life? where you may have the the physical strength to do it, but your mental capacity is tapped. I can't take nothing else. Have have you ever ever been to work and say, if my supervisor puts one more thing on my desk, I am done. You ever go home and say, if she, if she, if he say one more thing to me, you ever gone home and say, if these kids say, if they ask me for peanut butter and jelly, I'm going to lose it. Don't say nothing. Don't, don't, no. The answer is no. Leave me alone. <laughs> it, it is when you can't take anything else. Watch this. And God says, I'm not just going to maintain your body so you can stand on your feet. I'm going to maintain your mind so you have what you need emotionally and mentally to be able to see clearly. Because guess what? I know you're going through hell. I know you're going through heartache. I know you're going through danger. I know you're going through sad. We still going to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to uphold you. He says, I'm going to give you strength. And it it reminded me because the concept of this is I don't have it. The, the, The concept of this is, is I just need a break. Anybody just... If I could just catch, Lord, if I could just catch my breath, right? But, uh, Lord, if, if I could just get my feet up under me. You ever, you ever felt like that in life? If I can just get a breather, to, but life is coming at me so hard, I can't, I can't get up. I just need a little bit of rest. And I remembered Muhammad Ali when he would be in some of the most vicious fights of his career. He would do something called the rope-a-dope. I'm about to start preaching. Muhammad Ali would be in the ring. He'd be worn out and wore out. And Muhammad Ali would just go lean up against the ropes and just lean there for a moment. And the the enemy would be swinging on him. And Muhammad Ali would lean up against the ropes. and, And he wasn't holding himself up, but the ropes were holding him up. And the enemy was wasting all of his energy. And Muhammad Ali would be ducking and moving and ducking and moving. And the enemy would wear themselves out. The whole time he's against the ropes, the ropes are holding him up. And he's gaining his strength. He's gaining some energy. And then all of a sudden, when he gets a breather, he comes off the ropes and knocks the enemy out. I came to tell somebody today, God's going to hold you up like the ropes. You may be going through it right now, but when you come up off that rope, victory in the name of Jesus, victory over cancer, victory over anxiety, victory over over suicide, 
victory over heartache, victory over heartbreak. No, I'm not holding myself up. The God I know will keep on maintaining me and sustaining me. Do I got at least four witnesses that when life came at you and you almost buckled, you stood up on the ropes of God and moved forward into everything he got for you. Help me praise God because I'm still standing because God is my rope. He'll keep me up in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah says, listen to me, God's going to hold you up. God, I don't know who I'm talking to. God is going to hold you up. Let, let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. I'm, I'm, this is about to get deep. I don't even know if I'm going to finish this sermon, but I'm going to try. Listen to me. If life didn't require you to do anything outside of you, you wouldn't need God. Why am I going through this? Get God. Get him. You need him. I don't know who I'm talking to. This is a faith test now. Listen to me. You, you, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm glad you're where you are. I do not know who I'm talking to. I'm not saying I'm glad to where you are. If you don't go through this, you won't grow spiritually. You will never know God in the dimension you're about to learn him in this new season of your life. He's not trying to harm you. But James reminds us that God would allow us to go through certain things to build perseverance and character in you so we'll be complete, lacking nothing. Some of the hardest moments of my life, it, 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 it increased, my, it strengthened my relationship in God. My faith in him, my trust in him grew. Why? Because I needed him. I couldn't muster up any kind of strength. I don't care. Let me just help you all. I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care what kind of shoes you wear. I, I, none of, I don't care how many degrees you have behind your name. Let me t when life hits you and you got to call on somebody, and you better call on Jesus. There, there, there are moments and seasons of life where your money can't fix it. Your education can't fit. I don't care how many people you know and how you know everybody. And, they, you know, I know such, yeah, such and such ain't going to help you out of this one. Why? It's a situation only God can fix. And he, he, will, he, will, he, will, he will help you when you get there. The word of God says don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Because God is going to maintain you and God is going to hold you up. The first thing we learned is God can uphold you. I'm about to shout myself. Second thing I'm going to teach is God can pull you through. Go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Word of God reveals God, he can, he can uphold you. He, he can, while, you, while you're in the middle of the storm, he can uphold you. But while you're in a storm, not only can God uphold you, he can actually pull you through it. Exodus chapter 3. Go to verse 19. Verse 19 says this. Watch. Remember, we're looking at the hand of God. All right. I will uphold you with my right hand. We're looking at the hand of God. Exodus chapter 3, verse 19 says, but I know that the king of Egypt, watch this, will not let you go. Here it is. Unless compelled by a mighty hand. Verse 20. So I will, watch this now, stretch out my hand. And strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. After that, watch this, he gonna let you go. <laughs> that kind of threw that in there, the JP translation, right? <laughs> Listen to me. He says, the, this is a picture, the text, the context of the text is they're in bondage. Some, something or someone has them captive. They, they are bound. They, they don't have any liberty. They, 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 what, what, in life, sometimes we find ourselves where we thought we had a hold of something, and actually that thing has a hold of you. And then he says, listen, that not only am I going to come into the situation, but I'm going to get you out of the situation. How am I going to do it? God says, all I'm going to do is stretch out my right hand. And when I stretch out my mighty hand, he's going to have to let you go. 
In fact, a, a better accurate translation of this is, the enemy wouldn't even let you go had not it been for. Me stretching out my mighty hand. Stay with me. Which means there are, there are some things in life, the only way you're getting out of it is if God stretches out his hand and pulls you out of it. He says the enemy is going to see the wonders today. And when the enemy sees the wonders and the power of God, he's going to only have one option. What is that? Let you go. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what has a hold of you. I don't know what has you captive. I don't know what you're facing. But I do know when God steps in and tells whatever it is, it's got to let you go. You know what it has to do? It has no choice but to let you go. You may be, you may be experiencing or suffering from addiction. You know what addiction has to do when God says let you go? Let you go. Say this one more time. You, you may be addicted to something. You may be addicted to somewhere. Now I got to look up. Start the car. You may be addicted to someone. You got, you got the door for me, brother? You got the door for me? He won't even shake his head. He's just smiling. Uh, I'm seeing where you're going with this one, Pastor. We're going to figure it out. Sometimes we think we have control of a situation when the situation actually has control of you. And God has the ability, listen to me, to come in and to pull you out of it. Sometimes what has us bound is bitterness. Yes, you've been pained. Yes, you've been attacked. It, it's true. It happened. But, but, do you ha but bitterness destroys you. Bitterness, it changes you. you. You don't look the same. You don't behave the same. There's no joy. There's no happiness. There's no smile. There's no gladness. Why? Because you let what happened destroy you. I, I'm an advocate for therapy and coming through drama and trauma and pain and sadness. Why? Because I need everything God has for me to be able to do what he's called me to do without letting the perpetrator, come on, keep me bound afterwards. Power of God. I can come through. God says, I will come in and I will pull you out. God says, I will use my hand, and I'll pull you out. What has you, what's, what has a grip on you? But you know what Israel had to do for what had a hold of them to let go? They had to cry out to God. Maybe you don't even realize it has you. Maybe your, your pride or your arrogance makes you think you have it under control. Maybe you've been deceived and you think you have a hold of it when it's really controlling you. But when Israel cried out, then God stepped in and God pulled them out. Maybe the best thing you could do this morning is cry out to God. Lord, I, 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 I can't control this. Lord, I can't get out of this by myself. I need your strength and your power to reach in and pull me out. God reveals to us that his hand can hold us up. Thank you for the one hand clap and the one yes. <laughs> Thought the rope would at least got me. Got at least five hand claps. Praise God. God's hand can hold you up. God's hand can pull you out. Listen to me. If, you're, if, you're, if you are struggling with something, being serious. We joke a lot. I'm being serious. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you are, if something has a hold of you, it's not funny. It could be a life and death situation. Cry out to God. Get help. Don't, don't think 
you can control it. Because the enemy will say, well, try it one more time. That may be the last time. God can uphold you. God can pull you out with his hand. God's hand can also transform us. Go back to Jeremiah 18. God's hand can transform us. This is what he says in verse 18. This is the word that came down. Go to verse 2. It says, go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. All right. In other words, go down to the potter's house. Don't preach. Don't talk. Pay attention. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred. It was imperfect. It was dirty. It had stones in it. And, and it, needed, it needed me, watch this now, to, to form it into another pot. It, it came to me one way, and I realized it had blemishes. I, I, I realized there were stones and there, were, there, there was residue in it. So I had to form it into another pot. Watch this. Then he says, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it. Watch this now. As the potter seemed best. Stay right there. I want to live my best life. I want to be my best me. How can you do that when the scripture says, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him? Y'all don't like me. He never, the potter never asked the pot, what do you want to be? The potter never asked the pot, watch this, now the potter never asked the pot, what do you want to be when you grow up? Never asked him. The potter never said, well, what career choice do you want? He, the potter never asked. The potter says, what I'm going to do with your life if you let me. Lord, I'm about to start preaching. If you would let me, if you would let me take a hold of you, I'm about to start forming you and molding you and shaping you into the person I've already seen. Because you only know the right now, I know the not yet. And I'm about to start forming you and shaping you. In fact, the potter gets a wheel. And, he, and the wheel begins to spin, and it's in the potter's hand. And the potter begins to move the clay, and the wheel is spinning. And the potter is holding it in one side and looking at it on the other side. It's, as it's moving on the wheel, he begins to cut out and remove anything that does not look like what the potter is trying to make. Then he says, watch this now, I'm about to form it. After he forms it, he puts it in fire, and it becomes a masterpiece. But the only way that the potter begins to move the pot, if the pot's willing to rest in, his, in the wheel of his will. Who am I talking to this morning? Will you allow God to get you as clay, hold you in his hand, begin to move dust and begin to move stones and begin to move dirt and begin to move lying and begin to move cussing and begin to move fussing and begin to move gossip and begin to move slander and begin to move cheating and begin to move pride and begin to move jealousy and begin to move envy and begin to move sin and begin to move backbiting and begin to move everything that's ugly that doesn't look like him. Then he says, I'm about to form you and mold you. I'm about to mold you with my spirit. I'm about to mold you with joy and mold you with gladness and mold you with courage and mold you with boldness and mold you with Jesus and mold you with me. And I'm about to mold you, put you in the fire so you can be a masterpiece that gives me glory everywhere that I go. Do I got a witness in this house that when God got a hold of you, he changed the way that you walk. He changed the way that you talk. He changed the way that you live. He changes you because he's got you in his hand. Can you help me praise God this morning? Because God's about to mold you and shape you. He's going to shape you into a teacher with an anointing. Shape you into an attorney with an anointing. Shape you into a judge with an anointing. Shape you into everything he needs you to be with the anointing of God so that you can give him glory. Is there anybody in here that knows you're not here by accident? I'm here on purpose, 
and I need the power of God to transform my mind, transform my soul, transform my heart so I can be moving and give him glory. Let me help you out. You missed it. He gets the pot, then he puts the pot in the fire, then it's a masterpiece. Some of y'all don't want to go in the fire, but the fire is the only place that you become solid to be everything he called you to be. You can't be what God called you to be without going in the fire. And when he turns up the heat, turn up your praise. When he turns up the heat, turn up the praise. Because I know what's in there, what's cooking is a masterpiece. You may be in the hot kitchen right now, but I'm telling you right now that the hell you're going through right now is not by accident. It's on purpose, and you will be everything God has called you to be. I'm going to start praising God by myself because I've seen you in the future. I'm a, and you look a whole lot better than you do right now. So won't you help me praise God in advance? Yes, I'm in the fire. Yes, I'm under heat. Yes, I'm through a storm. But I know my Redeemer still lives. He who began a good work in me will see it unto the day of completion. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Can I get a witness that I know that my God still lives? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for my God is with me. His rod and his staff is with me. Why do I need a rod? I feel like preaching. And why do I need a staff? I need a rod to fight off the enemy when he tries to attack me. I need a staff when I get crazy enough to walk away. God will snatch you and pull you right back. Somebody help me praise God. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Grandma called him Jesus. Do you know him? His name is Jesus. What is the name? It is the name that is above every name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. I'm going to give you a choice. Do you want to bow now or bow later? I'm going to bow now and give him praise. I'm going to bow now and give him glory. I'm going to bow now and lift my hands up. I'm going to bow now and give him glory. I'm going to bow now and give him adoration. Anybody willing to help me praise God? Because I know that my Redeemer still lives. Yes, you may be sick, but God still lives. Yes, you may be tired, but God still lives. Yes, you may be done and ready to quit. God still lives. Let him hold you up in his mighty right hand. Help me praise God for his sustaining power. Help me praise God for his restoring power. Help me praise God for justification. Help me praise God for sanctification. Help me praise God for the Holy Ghost. Do I got any witnesses in here? that know the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me give him glory. God will sustain you with his hand. He'll uphold you with his hand. Watch this. But God saved you with his hand. Oh, my God. When the nails went through his mighty right hand, he sustained you. And they threw him in a tomb. I got a witness. Do I got a testimony? He laid in the grave. The disciples lost their mind. They did not know what to do. They ran home sad. They sat down home sad on Friday. They were sad on Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, Lord have mercy, he got up with all power in his hand. And a lady named Mary ran to the tomb, saw the rock had been rolled away, looked in there, said, what have you done with the body? Mary, is it me that you're looking for? Rabbi, and I, I got up with all power in my hand. You got to know that Jesus lives. He still reigns. He's still on the throne. I'm not worried about November because I know who my Redeemer is. I'm not voting for Jesus. He's not on the ballot. So I won't lose my mind. I won't lose no sleep because next year, Jesus still gonna reign. 
he'll still have all power in his hand in heaven and on earth. So I'm voting for J-E-S-U-S. That name is Jesus. Jesus, keep my mind. Jesus, keep my body. Jesus, keep my family. Jesus, keep my household. Jesus, keep my peace. Won't y'all help me praise God this morning? Hallelujah. I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Somebody say, I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Come on. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I... Everything's going to be 